So what do you guys think about engraving central tire inflation on the rim? At first I was thinking it's kind of cool because obviously that's one of the most unique things about the H1 is the onboard inflation system. But I'm just kind of, I'm not sure if we should do Predator Forge on both sides or central tire inflation. I, It is. Someone's got to clean this place up. <laughs> Here's the program. All right, guys. Welcome back to the vlog. Appreciate it as always. Today is pretty exciting. We've had a lot of time, a lot of money that's invested into this machine. It's a new uh, Haas, fully loaded VF3 SSYT. A lot of time going into the setup process. So it's not just like you drop it in and you're ready to go. I mean, it goes into everything from making sure we get all the tools in, all the uh, fixtures that we need. Today, pretty exciting because we are actually starting our first cut. So this is our very first forged wheel that we're about to cut. We have not cut one yet, and we'll see how it goes. I got all the trust in Josh first time around. You just never know what's gonna happen. But check this out before we start. Check out the fixturing that Josh did on this. So these clamps right here that go around to hold the rim in place, literally, all we need are like four, but he did, what is it, 10? 10, 10 of pieces, them. Yep. 10 of them. And what's pretty cool about it is these are all made in-house. Uh, so we have an aluminum clamp right here with steel backer on the backside. So it gives it a lot of strength and integrity on the top. But then the aluminum is soft when it clamps onto the aluminum inside of the rim. So it's ready to go. Are you ready to go? You ready to hit the button? Yep, let's give it a shot. All right, let's do this. Wheel Op 1 version 1. Here we go. This needs to go. I'm excited. Hey, I'm gonna need some zoom here, Jason, for when I panic you stop it. Uh, this is actually where the chamfer is. Oh, so yeah. you're gonna so that, all that's that disappearing. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then we have uh, in here. These need to get. Thinking I might drop a ball mill in here and just radius the lip a yeah, little bit. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Just yeah. to just to get the burr off. That'd be so off. hard to get deburred. Yeah, it. Yeah, you can't really fit a burr knife in there. Yeah. Um, Excuse me. I'm TikToking. No filming. I'm actually sending uh, Paul Hyde out in Florida. That that rim right here. Oh yeah. Next step, we're gonna do the chamfers. Right here, right where this line is. We're gonna, line is? this line right here. I guess this one has better lighting. Like the bevel? It's, it's a chamfer, not a bevel, there's a difference. Yeah, bro, it's not a bevel, it's a I'll, I'll explain, a bevel <laughs> goes to a single point, a chamfer flattens an edge, so it's also known as an edge break. So you can see here, this edge here, is gonna, is gonna be tapered at a 45 degree, so that's a chamfer. But on a knife, where you have one flat side and one angled side, that's a bevel. That's the difference. Yep. Cool. <laughs> he does that a lot. <laughs> well, I explained my point, didn't I? I think so. All right, so then I, I can shut the fuck up after that. Are you supposed to say fuck? Oh, shit, I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> All right, dude, let's cut this thing. Jason, just kind of beats you down, like wears you out. 
Yeah, I know. It definitely does. Not to mention the annoyance. That Ryan is always making you look bad. I personally think you're awesome and do a great job filming. True, Jason in, in itself is a content farm. <laughs> so. <laughs> I hate both of you. So what are we doing right now? Oh yeah. We're about to go tap some holes, man. About 24 of them to be exact. And it's taken almost a full year to get to this point where we're cutting our first wheel. It was pretty rad. That's yeah, and then we actually pulled the trigger, I think it was December or so? Ja yeah, no, January. We January. pulled the trigger on the new Haas, and then it took, what, three months or so, and then another month of setup. Yep. So three months to manufacture, and then another month to set it up and get it actually they cutting something. They used to have something. them in stock to deliver? They overnight. used to, well, I mean, they used to have them, honestly, like, I think, what was the number that Haas was doing? They were doing like something like a couple hundred a day were being yeah. shipped out. Like a couple hundred of these mills were going out a day. Not necessarily this exact one, but. Yeah, and the, this machine's a little more of a specialty machine because it, it's not a normal VF3. It has a few other options that aren't standard uh, for these machines. So it does take them a little longer to manufacture that. So what do you guys think about engraving central tire inflation on the rim? At first I was thinking it was kind of cool because obviously that's one of the most unique things about the H1 is the onboard inflation system. But I'm just kind of, I'm not sure if we should do Predator Forge on both sides or central tire inflation. I, uh, let us know in the comments down below. I want to get your opinion on if we should have that. Because I've asked around the office and, and I've got mixed results. And I'm kind of thinking now maybe not putting it on there because we're going to have exposed CTIS. Yeah. And Josh brought up a good fact, which is the center cap, we can have CTIS on there. I mean, or the other option too is we just offer it multiple different ways. They're going to be custom rims made to order. So customer wants to have Predator Forge on the bottom, central tire inflation on the top. We just pull up that program and hit cut. So I guess we have the flexibility to do virtually anything we want to with it. But um, yeah, let us know what you think. Well, I mean, eventually we'll figure it out once we, we get you know more orders for one over the other. But I kind of dig the central tire inflation on there. And it doesn't actually have to be one or the other. We can do custom engravings, I would assume, as well. Because this is the last step before we take the rim out of the machine. Yeah, that's true. So we can probably have a, a smaller program of just whatever the customer wants engraved. And we can put like Bob's rims on there. Exactly. We're throwing some ARB uh, air lockers into a truck. And we're, hey Tommy, you mind dropping that really quick? Sorry, and popping the hood open. So a while back, we, I made a comment that the ARB air pumps are like a cheap Chinese pump compared to the uh, CTIS pump over here. Uh, we have someone out there that was selling the ARB air pumps as an upgraded over the factory one. Factory one's like 1500 bucks. The ARB is like seven, eight hundred dollars The double pump system. Uh, it looks cool in pictures, but it's a cheap Chinese one. And it's funny because uh, we just had it installed on here. Uh, it's, a, it's a decent pump, but it is Chinese manufactured. And this company's like, no, 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 you gotta replace your original CTIS pump for this guy. It's way better and it's made in um, Australia, which is not the case. And I said that a while ago, I got a bunch of flack online, but it is in fact manufactured in China because you can buy the knockoff version, which is identical and from the same distributors. They moonlight selling it without the sticker on top and they will not show you these caps right here, otherwise, they're exactly the same, and you can save a couple hundred bucks on Amazon, which is crazy. Pretty decent pump overall, expensive, even at like 400 bucks versus the ARB version at like six, $700. But it is manufactured in China, so if you are looking at swapping out your CTIS pump, now this is a great pump, it works very well, but swapping out your CTIS pump for this, highly would not recommend doing that. The CTIS pump is probably, here, let's go over here and take a look at it. I think they're around 1500 bucks, but it's a 100% duty cycle. They're extremely well-built pumps, and it's a little dusty. You can see it over here, guys, but that's the pump right there. So don't replace this for that ARB pump. ARB pump is, is good for its own purpose, but it is not at the same level as this. 100% duty cycle means you can run that thing 
24 hours a day for many, many years and no issues at all. Now, when they do go out, what I would recommend doing is opening it up, cleaning it out, maybe replacing the seals in there, and you're probably good to go. So you can salvage those and kind of rebuild those pumps. Like the ARBs, it's just, it's a throwaway pump. So when it does stop working, just toss it out. But again, really uh, expensive pump here, just a, a lower grade pump over here. But for air lockers, it's a great way to go. And honestly, on this Humvee, I'm not running CTIS, so I'd run the ARBs. And then you have an output too, it's a, um, you could probably pump, that will probably pump a little bit quicker than the factory pump. Yeah. Just not as durable, not as strong. It's good for the air locker setup, and you can add an air line, you know, go tire by tire if you wanted to. It's good mm -hmm. for that setup, but as far as you can have to replace the factory seat, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I don't know why anybody would ever go tire by tire airing them up unless they had a Jeep. <laughs> with with the auto zone compression that plugs into the cigarette port. Uh, it works. 30 minutes tired. 30 minutes? Oh, no, that, that'd be two hours later. It only gets like 30 PSI. Oh, Should really? 40-30 is good enough to get to the gas station. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. That's the way. All right, so yeah, I just want to highlight that. Let's get back to the rim now. Your timing's impeccable. Is like it? just about to finish. Apparently there's some misunderstanding of forged versus cast wheels uh, where people aren't grasping the fact that, that cast is a lower grade version of the rim than a forging is. Cast rims are fine for the most part, but if we can offer something that is literally 10 times better being forged, let's do it, especially for an H1. I mean, if you're running like, I don't know, a Suzuki Samurai, then who cares? But on an H1, if you have the option to go with a forging and you can afford the extra cost that goes into a forged rim versus a cast, that's the route I would go for sure. So there's some internet trolls out there. They're everywhere. And for us to come out with the forging saying, yeah, it is better, a forged rim is better than a cast version, is making an attack against manufacturers who make cast rims. The two rim companies out there do a fine cast rim. They're just fine. There's no issues at all. Um, one of them's a big one out in LA and the other one's back east um, somewhere and they do a good job. All right, so hopefully that clears things up that, that forge rims are far superior than cast. I know there's gonna be people out there who just don't understand that and I hope that they can troll off somewhere if they don't understand this basic concept of a forging and how it works. Uh, maybe Google it. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely excited about this rim coming off and we're done now. Yeah. So let's pull this thing out. Yeah. All right, so we got the rim off. Looking incredible. Um, just a couple little things that we need to clean up as far as um, like sanding this down slightly, clean up, uh, just deburr everything, make sure it's 100%. But as far as machining goes, it's dialed now. Yeah. There's like, there's really no changes I would make at all to this. We can go find some hardware and uh, complete the rim. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I was born ready. I don't think Josh is ready. Hey Josh, you ready? He's ready. I'm ready. You ready? You, you can't say fucking. It's okay. You ready? All right, let's go. I thought so too, but he's not coming over. He's supposed to come to us. What the hell are you doing, John? How about we meet in the middle and then we can come over here? All right, come on. Okay, so. Got the rim done, it's off the mill. We just threw some button socket caps, stainless steel hardware in here, uh, just to get an idea. But the cool thing about this is, these rims are semi-customizable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna offer in a number of different ways, some with the Predator Forged on here, some with that name plate on both sides, 
some without the central tire inflation, it's gonna be your choice ultimately. The other cool thing is we can replace all the stainless steel hardware on here. Instead of doing button socket caps, we're gonna try out 12 points. Um, we're gonna have all kinds of different options for bolt heads. So definitely get into some really unique customization. And then we threw our center, uh, CTIS center cap in the center here. It's definitely the wrong hardware, I know. We've got some grade eights here. They obviously don't match with the stainless steel button socket caps, but we'll do button socket caps over here or the 12 points. And I really think the 12 points are gonna look really good. So those are coming in, hopefully here tomorrow. One of the other things too, Josh and I were talking about was maybe even setting off like a little spacer plate in here. And it's really just for aesthetics, but to bolt down another piece of billet aluminum, like chunk of aluminum right in this location here and do it in between each of the spokes. And then you could even get into like various contrasting. So you could do black on black, you could do like a texture black finish around here, which this is texture black. Then we go with a gloss black here, gloss black in the center cap, or you go with like, let's say it's like that truck right there, it's green, we could do like that green finish on the center cap, as well as these chunks of aluminum here. So. Ultimately, there's all kinds of options. It's, it's gonna be pretty sick as far as the flexibility in what we're developing for, for you guys. What do you think, Jason? Yeah. Yes, right. Jason agrees. So we're gonna cut another rim now. You ready? Here we uh, go. That's it. Hey, do you need to stick your hand in there, Jason? Hell no. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and the bell notification down below, and we'll see you guys soon. Actually, maybe a couple more vlogs. I know we got some trucks going on. Wait, that what are... does the bell do? I don't know. You just told me about the bell. I can't keep up with all this stuff. And you forgot. Yeah. It I'm, gives the viewers I'm not a millennial. They it's hit a bell the bell. That doesn't even ring. All right, see you guys soon. Dude, just hit a bell so Jason stops and talking to me. And I'll be up to date on I'd... all our new vlogs. All right, please just You're hit, so bad hit the bell so I don't have to bring up a stupid <laughs> bell in the future. Thanks for watching. We give Jason a lot of shit, and we definitely mean it. <laughs> Actually, Jason and I went to school together. Did you know that? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, you're really, really cool. You're a grade younger than I was? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, think. I was supposed to be in the same grade. You're, well, I was supposed to be a grade up from where I was at. Same here. I got held back in kindergarten, actually. Dude, no way, me too. Are you serious? Yes. I didn't even know that was a thing. No I way. I kindergarten twice. I don't need Did that. Did we just become best friends? Yeah.